When you go to Google's search bar and search for results related to a specific topic, you simply enter in your question or term and press search. From there, through the use of tags and keywords, Google's algorithm will instantly scan its vast database, from which it will pull all of the corresponding information to that topic and return it to you in the search results. Believe it or not, Google uses a very basic algorithmic equation to perform these actions. It looks like this. Input plus processing equals output, where whatever is entered into the search bar is the input. Google's algorithm scanning its database is the processing variable, and the output is whatever is returned in the search results. These results are heavily influenced by what is known as search engine optimization, or SEO. SEO uses things such as the keywords and tags that are entered into the search bar to locate and return the most appropriate related results to the user. For example, if you give this video a like, it will let YouTube's algorithm know to recommend this video to others. So if you're going to enjoy it, it would be greatly appreciated. Our brain uses this exact same algorithm in the production of a thought, but with different variables. Like modern day computers, the algorithm used by our brain is input plus processing equals output. We receive our input through the conscious part of our mind where that input is then processed in our subconscious mind, and the output is returned in the form of a thought. Where Google's output is influenced by keywords and tags, our thoughts are influenced by what we call thought patterns or triggers. Upon receiving input, our brain seeks out the most relevant information stored within the subconscious mind to recall information, or our brain cells interact in ways which we don't quite understand to produce a new idea. These phenomena appear to be quite similar on paper and upon first glance, but there are significant differences. Let's take a look. The Advantages and Disadvantages of the Brain Both computers and our brain have their advantages and disadvantages. For example, computers are capable of processing at a rate of 3.4 billion times per second while brain cells can only perform about 500 operations per second at maximum speed. Also, it is estimated that computers make an operational error once per 1 trillion operations, while our brain, as I'm sure you are aware by now, makes mistakes 1 billion times as frequent. The brain is largely self-oriented, about 99% self-oriented in fact, whereas you can hook up a computer and instantly connect with the entire outside world. With all of that being said, each of us can outperform the modern-day computer system using our brain. How could that be possible? Allow me to explain this using one quick example. What do you see when you look at this drawing? You see a face, correct? What is interesting is not the fact that you are able to identify the face, but how quickly you are able to identify the face. With our brain operating at the speeds we've previously mentioned, we are only able to perform between 30 to 50 operations within a split second. But that is all that it takes. Computer software must take thousands, even millions of steps to identify this same image as a face. Furthermore, if there is a mistake anywhere along the way, especially at the beginning of the computer's operations, it will only grow in size until the computer reports back an operational error. This experiment leads us to the fundamental principle of how we think, because it is completely different from anything we know in our world. We will call it the brain's trick. The brain's trick. Remember, when Google's algorithm receives its input from the search bar, it begins processing its database where it will use things such as keywords and tags to output the most relevant information. When our brain receives input through the sensory receptors in our eyes when we look at something, for example, those sensory cells activate all the cells around them to form what is known as an activity pattern. When that activity pattern is formed, it produces what we call a thought. This is the main difference between the algorithm of our brain and the algorithm of a computer. The brain does not distinguish between processing and output because processing the information is the thought or output itself. You see, when Google begins to search its database, it is looking for a specific pre-existing piece of information. But when our brain outputs a thought, the thought has not been tracked down and located. It has been created. In simple terms, Computers output results in the form of data. Our brain outputs thoughts in the form of ideas. These ideas are completely immeasurable. 
While the data given by a computer is extremely measurable, computers can rapidly bring us the information we are searching for, but they will never take us anywhere new. They are following a hard, predetermined set of rules, never operating outside of those lines. Perfectly imperfect. The creativity our brain is able to produce from working outside of these very lines would not be possible if it were not for the high rate of operational errors that occur. When being compared to a computer's insanely low rate of operational errors anyways, these mistakes in our thinking is what separates us from these machines. Our brain is willing to return an output without knowing beforehand if that output is correct or incorrect. The output our brain is capable of producing is simply limitless. We try, we fail, we try again, and we fail again. And we keep trying until we arrive at the most appropriate response for our given input. This imperfection, the willingness to make a mistake, is a superpower of ours and it is nothing we should run from. In fact, we must embrace this creative quality of our brain and use it to our advantage. Otherwise, nothing separates us from the operational machines we use in our day-to-day -day lives.